Welcome everybody. I have two projects here that I'm going to show you, both of which are haunted hidey holes. The first one is a brand new project and the second one is one that I've never posted here. So uh, thanks for watching and enjoy the videos. So I bought this frame at Savers for $2.99, but when I opened it up, this weird tarot card was in there. <laughs> I hope this isn't foreshadowing for something. Isn't the Three of Swords a really terrible card? I don't remember and I'm too scared to look it up. So we're gonna forget it existed because that's how you get rid of all your problems is you just forget that they exist and then they go away on their own, probably. But the one thing that I'm not willing to forget is how much I want a circle window in my real life, which is probably why I build a lot of circle windows in my art. So I used some shrinky dink plastic and shrunk it down for the glass. But we want our window to look pretty realistic, so I gotta light up the backside. Also, lights make a project 73% uh, better, which is almost as good as the circle window. Uh, circle windows make a project 103% better. And since I'm a crafty chick, I use the frame part out of my cameo mold to frame my circle window. I think that's the right word, cameo. You know, those necklaces with the lady bust. I'm not sure. I've only actually seen that word. I've never heard it said. Hold up, watch this transition. Schwabam. Look at that. We got two little crates. But but what are we going to fill our crates with? Ashley, what are we filling our crates with? Are those tummy noodles? They sure are. Luckily, I have a whole box full of leftover body parts. <laughs> okay, do not take that phrase out of context. I do not own a real box full of body parts, but I do have a whole bunch of boxes full of other things. See, look at all my boxes. I bet you never thought I was organized. Look, I even have a box full of... Okay, that, that's my sister's teeth. Look, my mom gave them to me, okay? It's not that weird that I have my sister's teeth in a box. I don't know why she didn't give them to my sister. Also, where are my teeth? I never got my teeth. I would love to have some little... Ashley teeth in a box. Oh yeah, I gave my teeth to the tooth fairy. I forgot. Anyways, back to this art because we went on a really weird tangent. Look at that, we got our crates done. And now I'm gonna put them right here. So in case you're wondering, we're making an attic. Attic? Attic. Look, some of you get really triggered about how I pronounce words, so I'm trying to pronounce them correctly. Anyway, so I was thinking every attic needs a monster because that's where I assume monsters live during the day is in your attic. So I did this really terrible monster thing and it was ter it was so bad. So I ended up scrapping that, but I've been trying to include some mistakes in my videos because you know what, we're not all perfect. And sometimes the first idea is terrible and that's totally fine. Did I spend two hours making that monstrosity? I sure did, but I knew it was a terrible idea after I made it, so I moved on. Oh, and here comes Emily giving her moral support. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. I couldn't have done it without you. Well, now that we have Emily's approval, maybe we should make up a story for this box. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. So this attic is in an old mansion owned by the Foxworth family. If you know, you know. Anyways, this family was so rich and powerful that they owned a whole staff of people. And the way that they got rich and powerful was this monster octopus in the attic. You see, the monster would do whatever they wanted as long as they made a sacrifice to it. You know, not not just like an animal, like, you know. But hold up, look at this book. Hmm, I wonder who wrote, oh, it was me. I wrote that book. By the way, the link's in my bio if you wanna pre-order the regular sized book. Do you like how I slipped in that little self-promotion? Anyways, back to the story. So the Foxworth family has been doing this for generations. And usually they just pick somebody from their staff and they're like, hey, uh, the attic needs to be cleaned. Why don't you go up there? And, and then they're never heard from again. And the bam, the Foxworth Foxworth family has, I don't know, what would you wish for? A new pony? A new car? Uh, no, they're rich. They don't need a car or a pony. Ooh, I know. Mind control. Because what's the ultimate goal? To control people's minds? I guess. I guess. Then you could like sway everything your way. And then they could make more money, potentially. But the whole family got this power and they all used it on each other, thus destroying their minds. And the monster knew because that would, hey, it's me. Hi. Anyways, the monster knew that that would happen because it happens to everybody eventually who has a magic wish granting octopus in their attic. Everybody always wishes for mind control and the whole family became psychologically traumatized and they all went crazy. The end. What do you think of my haunted hidey hole? Was it creepy enough? All right, don't go yet. Remember there's a second video and here it is now. Hey, guess what time it is? It's time for another creepy shop and this time I'm doing it in a clock. Since this clock is round, I need some flat surfaces. Ah, there's a flat surface. Now, before we jam it in my clock hole, we gotta paint it. I love checkerboard floors. I mean, not as much as I love circle windows, but it's pretty high up there on my list. And for some reason, whenever I think of a creepy shop, I always think of a checkerboard floor. But a clean checkerboard floor is not creepy, so I dirtified it. There, now I can shove it in my hole. Okay, so since this is a shop, we're gonna need some shelves to hold some product. So here I am just building and installing my shelves. Emily, stop sniffing super glue. You can't afford to lose any more brain cells. All right, there are my shelves. Now for the trap door. Look, I know 
you're asking, why does a shop need a trapdoor? Well, remember, this is a creepy shop. So I'm just messing up the floor pattern. I'm just kidding. It's actually a trapdoor. But I know some of you were triggered, weren't you? We've all seen those photos of the unsatisfying tile work where they mess up one tile. Ooh, now that's scary. Anyways, what were we talking about? Oh, right, the shop. Guess what kind of shop this is? It's a plant shop. And why am I putting holes in these shelves? Well, because there's something special in the basement. Look, these holes go all the way through, just like the trap door. But before I tell you what's in the basement, I'm gonna drag it out a little bit longer. Look, just be grateful I'm not making a part two of this video. I mean, I think that that deserves a like and a follow maybe. Or maybe a comment. I know, comment why you hate part twos and we can rally in the comment section. Or maybe you do like part twos. Anyways, I'm just making a window. Yes, it would be better if it was a circle window, but that's not very shoppy. See, this is a plant shop, not a circle window shop. Although that could be a cool shop. I might have to do that next time. Ooh, or an octopus shop. I'm just using the cellophane to color these lights and some red cellophane for the basement because we don't know yet what's in the basement. And then I added some mossy stuff and watch this. Oh yeah, I love doing that. If only it was that easy in real life. Okay, I'm just cutting out this wood paneling because wood paneling seems very basement-y. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm making curtains for my window. But again, white curtains are not very scary, so they've been stained with a mystery fluid. Trust me, don't ask. You don't wanna know. Okay, now for the basement floor. But this gap was bugging Emily, so I filled it with grass. She appreciated it. Boop. Now for my OSHA mandated potato break. I mean my lunch, but I am gonna use the foil. Yeah, I could go upstairs and get new foil, but that's like all the way upstairs. And this foil is only a little bit potato-y. It's fine. So I wrapped my potato foil in clay. Can, can you guess what's in the basement yet? That's right, there's man eating plants in the basement or rather person eating plants. And then can you believe it? I, I burnt it in the oven. Stupid oven temperature cooking's hard. <sighs> it's fine, I guess I'll paint it. There, one person eating plant. Oh no, it's got a taste for blood. <laughs> but she's looking kind of lonely, so we'll give her a friend. There, there's two in the pot. I'm just gonna place them below this trap door for no reason. And you know what? Our totally real plant shop isn't looking very planty, so we gotta add some plants for people to purchase. They're totally normal plants. Nothing weird about them at all. I'm sure if you brought home this plant, it would definitely not eat you. I mean, what a really weird thing to say. It's totally gonna eat you. Speaking of eating things, yes, I am using a weeping angel as my cutting board. Don't blink. And she's gone. Okay, I'm making a crate out of popsicle sticks, which is a lot harder than it looks. They kept wanting to fall over. Anyways, so now that we know what's in the basement, let's talk about it. Okay, here's the story I'm thinking. So this started off as a normal plant shop, but the person who owns it is some sort of mad scientist. We'll call him Oliver. I don't know, I just like the name Oliver. So why is Oliver mad? Well, his mom always degrades him for opening a plant shop when he has a science degree. I mean, to be fair, he was top of his class and he opens a plant shop. But look, he's trying to follow his dream, okay? And his mom needs to mind her business. Anyway, so I had a heated family dinner one night where she was just really laying in on him about opening a plant shop called Plant Shop. He could have at least thought of a better name. He stormed out and came back to his plant shop called Plant Shop, which is the coolest name ever, to create a person eating plant, thinking it would solve all his mommy problems. So the next day he lied to his mom telling her she was right, the name Plant Shop for a plant shop is a terrible name for a plant shop even though it isn't. And so when she came over to discuss different name options, he opened up the trap door and the plant ate her. But then the plant gained sentience from eating humans. And not only did it take over the shop, but it took over all the people working in the shop, including Oliver. You know, like a brain slug situation. Ooh, wait, I know. When it ate Oliver's mom, it gained her personality. And that's why it took over. Not because it was a person eating plant. I mean, it makes sense, right? Because she's always wanted to control his life. And now she's got the ultimate control. So when a customer comes in and Cynthia's hungry, by the way, the plant's name is Cynthia now because that's Oliver's mom's name. The trap door is opened. But you know, she's not hungry all the time. And if everybody who entered your shop went missing, people would start to have questions. So instead of eating everybody that comes in, she just sells little pieces of herself to anybody who wants a plant. And that's why there's holes in the floor because she's trying to spread herself around like a plague. And that's how the world ends. Little Cynthia's take over the whole world. The end. What, what do you think of my story? And before you say anything, I did not rip off Little Shop of Okay, I, I kind of did. But it's different, sort of. Anyways, I'm adding this lamp right above our crate of body parts because we want to highlight those body parts. And I'm finished. What do you guys think? Here's a closer look of Cynthia and her food supply. And then we have the shop upstairs. Don't fall down that hole unless you want to feed Cynthia. And then we have Cynthia's babies. But hold on, what's it look like in the dark? Ooh, super spooky. Anyways, what do you think my next crime scene should be? I kind of like the shop ideas, but my last three were shops, so maybe I should do something different. What do you think? <laughs>